Another equally famous resident of the Sonoran Desert, the prickly pear cactus, is also a drought resistor. But even the prickly pear had a tough time last winter. Things like this prickly pear would be twice as thick as it is right now when we look at this pad right here and it's, it's paper thin. But sometimes things look worse than they actually are. Even a dead looking cactus can spring back to life when moisture conditions change. They're very drought resistant. This plant is far from being dead. And matter of fact, it would take a lot worse conditions than this to kill it. But it exists here in the Sonoran Desert just because it is so tough and it is so drought resistant. Borrowing a trick from the saguaro, the jojoba also photosynthesizes at night. This plant has thick leathery leaves and it loses very little moisture through, the, through them. And so it's able to ride out these droughts pretty well. But not all plants in the Sonoran Desert are drought resistors. Some have developed other methods to survive in these extreme times. Unlike cactus, which resist drought conditions, ocotillas and many other plants go dormant when conditions turn unfavorable. So a plant like this, as the conditions dry out, it drops its leaves and it goes into a dormancy. It actually photosynthesizes through this green bark that you see, and that keeps the plant alive. But within a matter of days after a rainfall event, this plant can put on a whole new set of leaves and look like a very different, very vibrant, very alive plant. One of the amazing things that happens when an ocotillo comes out of dormancy is the green areas actually expand and that allows the plant to take in more light and produce leaves. So the canes are supposed to twist or the branches are supposed to twist open exposing these larger green windows and then the plant wakes up and starts, you know, making food and puts on leaves like that. The bursage is another desert staple. It typically goes dormant in the summer but it can remain dormant during a dry winter like the last one, producing much smaller leaves than it would during a wet winter. These little tiny leaves we see are characteristic of the months of June and early July and late May. Uh, these leaves lose little moisture because they're so small but allows the plant to manufacture food. Typically this time of year, instead of having these little leaves, it would have a leaf that's about half the size of the palm of my hand. And those are the winter leaves or the wet period leaves. And this plant just can't afford to do it on a year like this. We're in one of the worst dry spells in the history of this state. For the past 10 years, Arizona has received below normal rainfall. When you live in a place that only gets about seven inches of rain annually, well, every drop counts. Plant species have adapted to periodic drought in ways that help individual plants like saguaro, prickly pear, and bursage to survive a dry spell. Wildlife species, on the other hand, tend to adapt by decreasing their numbers so that the species as a whole can survive. The situation for individual birds and animals caught in drought conditions can be tough. Situation couldn't possibly be more dire uh, for wildlife. Wildlife handles dry spells or drought situations in two basic ways. Um, there are wildlife that respond very quickly to the environmental conditions, things like quail and rabbits and rodents, that um, if you get a wet spell, they reproduce very rapidly and their populations come up very drastically. If it's dry, the reproduction is much lower and uh, suitable for the conditions that the environment offers. 